Hello and welcome to computer class. My name is Dave and today we are talking about printers. And uh, hopefully this will be a pretty helpful lesson. It's pretty practical. A lot of people print and so printers are being used all the time in the computer world. Uh, but there is a ton of information that people don't know about printers. And so hopefully I can clear some things up for you today with regard to these devices. All right, uh, to start out with, a printer is an output device that produces text and graphics on a physical medium such as paper. It doesn't just have to be paper, but as you will see as the lesson progresses, it could be other things. But um, paper is the typical one. And there are two basic types of printers, and these are pretty important. Monochrome printers, they only print black um, and white. And color printers prints the all the colors and black, of course. All right. So that being said, um, on a computer to connect a printer to a computer, um, there's usually a piece of software on the computer that's required, and that is a printer driver. And basically, this piece of software um, converts the data to be printed to something that the printer understands. And oftentimes this uh, driver allows you to connect to the printer um, on a network or maybe you'll connect a physical cable to the printer and use the piece of software to connect that way. Um, but now however you do it, this piece of software must be installed on the host machine um, to print to the, um, to the printer. Okay, and that device, uh, that piece of software is known as a printer driver. Drivers are incredibly important, and um, if you don't have it for a specific device, drivers are used for other things like mice and uh, keyboards and lots of other things. And if you don't have your drivers, obviously plugging the printer into the computer does nothing. I mean, you can, you can plug it in all day, you can stick it on the network, but if you don't actually install the driver on the machine, it just doesn't seem to work. And so how do you actually do this in Windows? Um, if you go to your settings here and type printer, um, you can actually see your uh, printers that are on your computer. And you can just hit uh, add a printer and it will scan your network for a printer. Or if you've plugged in a USB cable to your computer to your printer, you could find it this way. And a good way to do it is to find here, my printer is the uh, color H, uh, color, um, there we go, that's what I'm looking to do, is the color HP. And so what we wanna do here is go ahead and download the driver for instance, assuming this doesn't work, like if you click this and can't get it to install, what you would do is you go HP color Laser Jet MFP M477FDW driver. And you could go to the manufacturer's website. Here we go, HP. And you could get their driver, for instance. So here's the basic drivers. You just download that basic driver, and then when it downloads, press install and you could do the setup process for your printer. Um, so that is, let me bring this back up, what a printer driver is and how to uh, install it. That being said, a printer queue is what happens every time you print something. It basically goes to this list or, or queue. The next thing, like if you print in multiple documents, it sits in this queue because the printer only has so much memory and so it will it sends the documents one at a time to the printer. Now the printer can store a couple um, at a time, but after a while it just sits in the queue and sends it to the printer. Um, and once it sends it, the printer then stores it in its memory and print while well, it prints out the document. And then when it's done, it's done. Um, so a printer queue displays information about documents that are waiting to print, such as the printing status, document owner. So if multiple people are sharing a printer document owner, for instance, and number of pages to print. You can use the printer queue to view, pause, resume, restart, and cancel print jobs. So again, if you go to printer on your computer, 
and if you we gotta make this bigger if you click on it you can hit open the queue and this little dialog box pops up and the moment you print something and again I know this printer is not connected anymore it's because it's offline but the moment you print something um, it would show up here so that's kind of important to know um, for printing okay you can also like cancel documents if they're stuck for whatever reason which sometimes things do get stuck okay this is a video I'll link down in the description on how to delete stuck printer jobs in Windows and fix those type of problems so it could be helpful moving on uh, we have ink or color spaces for printers so the first is CMY and it refers to three inks used um, in some color printing cyan magenta and yellow and CMY uh, Printers mix equal amounts of cyan, magenta, and yellow to create a dark brown that resembles black, as you see in the illustration here. Um, as they overlap the colors, they can create this darker blackish brown, so to speak, and that's how they get the fourth color, because you kind of have to have four main colors to create all the colors. Um, well, you need three major colors to create all the colors in this case. Um, and here they're making a brown out of just basically blobbing all the ink on top of itself. So that's the first color space. The second color space is called, um, or way of doing ink, is a CMYK method, and refers to the four inks used in some color printing, cyan, magenta, yellow, and key as the last one. And this is probably the most commonly used one. Um, and it combines the three colors to make just about every other color. And then, of course, you have black which is the majority of things people print are black. When it comes to paperweight for printers, um, hard copy uh, or printout is printed content. That's a term we use for, for papers. Um, the standard weight for paper is 20 pounds. Anything, you know, 20 pounds and lower is tends to be, you know, average, but mainly the standard for printing is 20 pounds. For paper for average documents such as copies, emails, or school papers. That being said, a mid range would be 22 to 24 pound paper. For quality documents such as business proposals, presentations, double sided documents, so things don't bleed through. Um, and again, the pound for the paper is measured um, such that if you were to pull on either side, um, not necessarily rip it because it'd be really easy to rip it. Um, but if you pull on it, how you know, to, to rip it this direction, that would be the pound that it takes to to forcibly uh, rip the paper. Okay. Then the heavier documents are on the 28 to 30 pound, and for printing thick, heavy-duty documents such as flyers, brochures, and heavy coverage documents, more of a cardstock, if you will, is the heavy. Okay. Problems that can occur when printing. Uh, the most common one is a paper jam. It's a term used to describe when paper or other printed material gets stuck or log lodged in the printer and is able, it's not able to eject it. And the basic way to um, deal with this problem is to not let just like, grab a tiny piece of it and try to rip it out real fast, but to actually grab it with two hands and slowly and incrementally trying not to rip it because if you rip it it gets stuck in the heads and then you'll almost never get it out um, and you can actually like you know break the printer permanently because of that if something gets fully stuck in there and you, you, you there's no way to take apart it's so complicated like it would take a while to fix you might have to take it someplace so the best thing to do is to just patiently take the paper out and when this occurs, the printer will not function properly until the paper has been manually removed. Again, even a little tiny little piece is still stuck way in there and you can't get to it. That's why it's important to... There's usually like a door on the back of the printer that you can open up and slowly but surely pull it out with two hands, not grabbing a corner and yanking to the side, but just actually pulling it out. Second problem that can occur is an ink clog or... Uh, ink jet getting clogged so to speak a clog that can occur when um, ink on the printer head of the cartridge dries up and won't allow additional ink to pass by and this occurs mainly on inkjet printers um, if the if the printer head because because laser jet ones are powder and so they can't clog like this usually 
if the printer head nozzles are blocked or dried out, you'll need to just um, dissolve the dried ink, rub the end of the cartridge with a wet paper towel, get rid of the dried ink or some sort of dissolvent, and then stick it back onto back into the printer and it should start working again is the typical method of doing this. And there's a picture there. Okay. That being said, both the um, monochrome and color printers have two types of or two forms of printers that you can get these two styles. <laughs> they could be two, yeah, two ways of printing within um, the monochrome and color printer categories. Okay, so two ways. I think types is a bad way to say it, but two ways of printing. Um, so inkjet printers, the inkjet technology works by spraying very fine drops of ink on the sheet of paper. So it just sprays these little dots. And if you take a magnifying glass and actually look, you can see that. If you've ever taken and looked at a, a newspaper under a magnifying glass, and I know newspapers are outdated, but let's just say you took a magnifying glass and looked at it, there's lots of little dots. Um, and the same is true with inkjet. That's how they print. However, um, the way that this occurs, I should say, uh, droplets are ionized which allows them to be directed by magnetic plates in the ink's path. And as the paper is fed through the printer, the printer head moves back and forth and sprays thousands of these small little droplets on the page. Uh, then, of course, the resolution of the printer is measured in these dots. So we measure a inkjet printer's quality by dots per inch, so to speak. So you can have, you know, so many dots per inch, and that could be the quality or resolution of the printer. Development of inkjet printers. Inkjet printers are usually uh, were really an evolution of the dot matrix printers. Instead of metal needles, they used hundreds of tiny guns to fire dots of ink onto the paper instead. The characters they print are still made up of dots, just like a dot matrix printer, but the dots are so very tiny that you literally can't see them without a magnifying glass or something to blow it up. Okay. Different types of inkjet printers fire the ink in a variety of ways. In Canon printers, the, for instance, the ink is fired by heating it so it explodes towards the paper in bubbles. This is why Canon sells its printers under the name the Bubble Jet. Epson printers work a slightly different way. They use an effect called um, that big long word that I'm not going to try to pronounce. Tiny <laughs> electronic uh, currents controlled by electronic, electronic circuits inside the printer make miniature crystals jiggling back and forth and firing ink in jets as they do so. So again, lots of variations in printing. That being said, laser jet printers are different. Uh, they're different than inkjet. They're a type of printer that utilizes a laser beam to produce an image on a drum and then it kind of seals it into the paper with heat. So the light of the laser alters the electrical charge on the drum uh, whatever it hits, and the drum is then rolled through a reservoir of toner, which is packed up by the charged portion of the drum. Finally, the toner is transferred to the paper through a combination of heat and pressure, and that's often why when you pick up a page from a laser jet printer, it's very warm, and it's like almost like, yes, this feels so good. Anyway. Here is a video that I will link down in the description. Super cool about actually how the whole process of the laser jet printer works. It's sweet. It's a great video. Go watch that. Next, we have the 3D printer. The new kid on the block it refers to a various processes utilizing uh, used to synthesize a three-dimensional object from a plastic or resin. In 3D printing, successive layers of material are formed under the computer's control to create an object. And so you see an example here. Literally, like, there's also pens, too, in 3D printers, so you can actually, like, draw and print stuff with using a pen. But this is a desktop 3D printer, um, and they have very large ones, as you will see in my illustrations here. Companies involved in the 3D printing world, when it comes to the small industry or desktop printing industry, MakerBot happens to be a big name. Since January of 2009, Brie Pettis has kind of spearheaded and make, made the 3D printing world a big deal. And uh, MakerBot's machine works by laying down layers of plastic. 
not resin. That's very, very important there. Okay. Here is a video showing that printer at work. I will link that down in the description. Check it out. Then the second company is Form Labs. It's a Massachusetts-based company uh, from this, this guy founded in September 2011. Maxim Lebowski, I'm trying to say his name correctly. I, it's another, yeah, no way. I'm not getting that one correctly. <laughs> Form Labs designs and manufactures desktop 3D printers that use resin. And so there's a tank and it pulls or extrudes the image, big air quotes around image because it's like a piece of plastic, right? It pulls it out of the resin and prints using a laser. Here is a video of the Form 1. They also have the Form 2 and, and lots of other successive machines out. It's a video of, of this printer printing. So go check that out in the description again. The third one is uh, the Carbon M1. Uh, it is a the first commercial clip, which stands for Continuous Liquid Interface Production, based adhesive manufacturing machine. And the whole idea behind this machine is that companies have to store a lot of inventory um, for their products. So if we're taking a vacuum cleaner, for instance, and you lose a part like the nozzle on it, um, you would have to go to a store and they would have to keep that inventory to sell to you. Whereas if they have this printer, they could just print it out and not have to store this massive inventory. So in the future, we might I mean, like these glasses I have on are plastic. We might just print out our glasses, you know, at the glasses store and it will be perfectly made for our heads, which is so cool, right? I mean, the ability to just print custom items for everyone using this technology is phenomenal. So that's what this is about. This is a video of the Carbon M1 in action. Take a Take a second to check out that in the description as well. I know, a lot of videos today, but this is a cool topic. And uh, this clip technology is up and coming and very, very awesome. Number next, whatever I'm on, I think four. 3D Systems or, or and Stratasys are two companies involved in this. Um, they make professional grade 3D printers that are like huge, that print out like you know, for instance, if you needed the bottom of a shoe or you needed to prototype something, you know, bottom of a shoe, they'll print the rubber out or a helmet. They'll print the thing or a mold for something. I don't know. Whatever. These guys are the printers for that. They're really big and they can print numerous um, solutions and types. Like I said, it could print rubber, resin, like a whole bunch of plastic, whatever you need. Um, so here is a video about uh, 3D systems and the printers and what they can do for them. So check that out in the description again. Next, we have another interesting printer that I'm sure you probably haven't thought of, and it's called a laser cutter printer. And this is my favorite one that I found. It's called Glowforge. It uses a high powered laser to engrave wood, metal, or plastic. Super useful for crafts. And there's lots of these out there. This is not the only one. It's just got a really cool video. That's why I picked it. But, um, yeah, you could literally laser cut things. And, and that's a form of printing, if you think about it. Laser cutting like a piece of cardboard or something or, or leather or chocolate or, you know. Anyway, there's a video on this. I'll link it down in the description. You check it out and see uh, what you think about it. Again, another form of a printer. And then we've got commercial printers. Here's an example of that. I'm not sure if this is up to date really, but HP's Latex 3000 literally prints on latex these massive banners that you've probably seen on the sides of buildings. And I mean, how they print that big, right? Well, it's a big printer, needless to say. And they can even print like multiple sections of that and then stitch them together and make this massive thing on the side of a building. Um, yeah, that's commercial grade printers for you. And so here's a video on that. Check it out again in the description below. All right, and another video on that, how they do it, how they add ink. The ink is really, really a big deal for these types of printers. It's actually like mixing paint together. Um, and yeah, it's literally like mixing paint and then you just pour it in the machine and it prints. So 
Next up, we have the devices that control printing on a network. So if we talk in the IT world or information technology world, print servers are used quite often. Um, they manage printers and documents waiting to be printed on a network. So what happens when you're at an office space is everyone will be set up to print a document and when they print it it will go up to a computer that controls it and then releases it down onto the printer because so many people are printing at once it cannot all descend on the printer at the same time because printers don't have a ton of memory and other reasons traffic issues and things needless to say the print the computer that is releasing the jobs to the printer will release one at a time so that it doesn't overload the printer and it just prints out that job and then waits computer gives another one prints out that job waits and it, and it continues on and on or i've even seen it to where you can go to the printer and the job is stored in the print server and you just select the job that you want to release and it prints it out for you anyway that's kind of how print servers work so they're pretty cool. Google Cloud Print is a universally um, revolutionary idea, actually. It allows you to load your printer driver into the Google Cloud and um, print from anywhere in the world to your printer. So, for instance, you could print like, you know, you could be at work and print to your home printer because you're printing from the cloud. And basically, the job when you print it, it goes to a printer queue in Google Drive or the Google Cloud and then drops down to your printer at the house via the internet and voila, when you get home or even you could connect to your printer at work and print from your house to to an employee at your work. It's pretty cool. It's a revolutionary thing. I'm sure there's other examples of how this works with people loading printer drivers in the cloud. This is just one I found out there. So again, it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, using Google Cloud Print, you can make your home and work printers available for you and anyone you choose anywhere in the world. Google Cloud Print works on your phone, tablet, Chromebook, you know, you get the idea. All right, this is a video about it. It's a little dated, um, and again, I'm sure there's other examples of cloud printing out there to whether you can do this, but that's the one that I found. So hopefully this has been a quick, if not exhaustive, overview and maybe not entirely exhaustive, but as best as we could do overview of printing. And hopefully it was helpful for you. And I will see you in the next video.